In national news, the royal court announced that His Majesty the King, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, will depart the kingdom tomorrow, Wednesday the 29th of May, heading to China on a state visit upon the invitation of Chinese President Xi Jinping. During the visit, His Majesty the King will hold talks with the President on the strong relations between the two friendly countries, regional and international developments, in addition to the outcomes of the 33rd Arab Summit hosted by Bahrain. His Majesty will also participate in the opening session of the 10th Ministerial Conference of the China-Arab States Corporation Forum. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 50 for this year, restructuring the Board of Directors of the Central Bank of Bahrain based on the Prime Minister's proposal and following the Cabinet's approval. The Board of Directors of the CBB will be restructured as follows. Hassan Khalifa Al Jalahma as Chairman with the following members. The CEO of the Economic Development Board, the Governor of the CBB, the Under Secretary for Financial Affairs at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy, the Chief Executive of the Finance Financial Intelligence National Center at the Ministry of Interior, Ahmed Mohamed Bouheji and Amal Ahmed Al Abbasi. The term of membership shall be four years, renewable for other similar terms. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 51, restructuring the Board of Trustees of Bahrain Polytechnic based on the Prime Minister's proposal and following the Cabinet's approval. The Board of Trustees of Bahrain Polytechnic will be reconstituted under the chairmanship of Dr. Mohammed Ibn Mubarak Juma and the membership of Ali Hassan Ahmed Salman Al Baqidi. Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, Yusuf Farouk Al Muayyid, Ahmed Sami Al Tajr, Dalal Al Adal Bouheji, Engineer Yasser Abdurrahim Al Abbasi, and Dalal Ahmed Al Ghay. The term of the office of the chairman of the council and the first four members shall be four years and the term of the membership of the remaining members shall be three years. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 52 for this year, appointing the Deputy Governor of Muharraq based on the Minister of Interior's proposal and following the Cabinet's approval. Brigadier General Jassam Mohammed Al Ghatam is appointed as Deputy Governor of Muharraq for a term of four years. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 53 appointing an Assistant Under Secretary at the Prime Minister's Office based on a proposal by the Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Hussein Ali Mansour Al Shabab is appointed Assistant Under Secretary for Projects in the Prime Minister's Office. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 4 for this year, approving Bahrain's accession to the Convention on the Facilitation of International Maritime Traffic of 1965, following the approval of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The law stipulates that the Kingdom would join the Convention on the Facilitation of International Maritime Traffic of 1965, drawn up in London on April 9th of 1965, and accompanying this law with the following reservation. For the purpose of applying Standard 1.2 of Paragraph A of Clause 4 of the Annex of the Convention, Bahrain does not consider itself obligated to implement the provisions of the UN Convention relating to the status of refugees of 1951 and the UN Protocol relating to the status of refugees of 1967. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs held its 17th regular session chaired by its president, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The council congratulated His Majesty the King on the success of Bahrain's hosting of the 33rd Arab Summit, chaired by His Majesty, and its favorable outcomes, hailing His Majesty's opening address during the summit. The council noted His Majesty's call for support to the Palestinian people and their just cause, legitimate rights, and the establishment of their independent state. The Council commended Bahrain's initiatives announced during His Majesty's address to serve causes that are vital for regional stability and development. They also praised His Majesty's management of the summit and his follow-up on the implementation of its decisions which contributed to its success. They then noted the role of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister in the success of the summit. 
The council loaded the efforts of Saudi Arabia, led by the custodian of the two holy mosques and the crown prince, in caring for the Masjid al-Haram, al-Masjid al-Nabawi, and the holy sites and its efforts in serving pilgrims. They hailed the support of Bahrain's government and the Hajj mission to Bahraini pilgrims, calling on pilgrims to commit to the regulations of the Saudi Hajj ministry and the Bahrain Hajj mission for their safety. <coughs> The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Zayani, emphasized the importance of the visit by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the President of the current session of the Arab Summit, to China. His Majesty's official state visit at the invitation of President Xi Jinping will include His Majesty's participation in the opening session of the Arab Chinese Cooperation Forum in Beijing. Dr. Zayani said that His Majesty's visit to China reflects the depth of relations between the two countries, noting that it coincides with the 35th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between both countries. He said that Bahraini-Chinese relations have witnessed significant developments with the support of the two leaderships. The minister recounted the Bahraini-Chinese summit held between His Majesty and President Xi in Riyadh in 2022 on the sidelines of their participation in the Arab-Chinese summit hosted by Saudi Arabia. He said that the official discussions between the two leaders will address strengthening relations and bilateral cooperation in the political, economic, commercial, investment and development fields. He said that the discussions will also touch on expanding cooperation by signing a number of memoranda of understanding and agreements to enhance joint cooperation in various fields. The minister said that His Majesty the King and the Chinese President will also discuss regional and international developments and the current status of the war in the Gaza Strip. Arab and international efforts to cease fire and protect civilians and the repercussions of the war on the humanitarian conditions of civilians. The talks will also address the outcomes and initiatives of the Bahraini summit. In the presence of the Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah al Nuaimi, the meeting of the 19th regular session of the Executive Office of the Arab Information Ministers' Council was held, hosted by Bahrain and headed by the Chairman of the Office and the Saudi Minister of Information, Salman bin Yusuf al Dosri. The Minister of Information expressed thanks and appreciation for the efforts of Arab Information Ministers and members of the Executive Office in leading the Arab media system towards further advancement and development, thus enhancing media's role and its mission as one of the most important pillars of the development of the Arab world in all fields. He conveyed to the participants the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister and their wishes of success to the meeting in discussing and adopting recommendations to achieve Arab solidarity and integration. Dr. Nohaimi expressed aspiration that the meeting will continue the efforts that enhance joint Arab media cooperation Commensurate, commensurate with the current challenges, stressing that it has gained importance for being held directly following the Arab summit. The Minister of Information noted that the topics on the meeting's agenda are of great importance, particularly continuing media support for the Palestinian cause in light of the devastating conditions in the Gaza Strip. He added that Bahrain will continue to support all joint Arab cooperation efforts and all initiatives and proposals aimed at strengthening joint Arab media work. The Minister of Information, President of the Gulf Radio and Television Festival, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah al-Nuaimi, accompanied by the Director General of the Gulf Radio and Television Corporation, Secretary General of the Festival, uh, Mejri al qatani opened the radio and television production market held on the sidelines of the festival in the presence of heads and representatives of official and private Gulf radio and television bodies, officials, media figures and Gulf and Arab artists. The minister toured the market and was briefed on its pavillons and its broadcasting and transmission devices and modern technologies 
Lebanese. Dr. Noaimi said that the festival continues its successful march, noting the keenness of golf and Arab media and artistic institutions and private sector companies to participate in the festival. He hailed the organization of the market, which provides many opportunities and platforms to exchange expertise and experiences, conclude joint production deals, and learn about the latest equipment in radio and TV production and broadcasting. He also noted holding the second Gulf Media Forum as part of the festival which aims to develop Gulf media. He said that holding this festival coincides with Manama, the capital of Arab Media 2024, which gave the festival great importance and enriched its seminars and workshops that discuss the reality and future of the artistic and media industry, including the symposium Manama, Arab Media Capital 2024, Digital Media, Credibility and Influence. Dr. Noaimi thanked the Gulf Radio and Television Corporation for organizing this festival and to all the participant, participating officials and private Gulf Arab bodies and institutions. The activities of the 16th Gulf Radio Television Festival were announced in a press conference yesterday in presence of the Director General uh, Majri al Qatani and officials, journalists and media outlets. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah al Nuaimi, stressed that the support of His Majesty the King to this festival and the follow up uh, by the His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister represent a comprehensive umbrella for Gulf creative work. He pointed out Bahrain's pride in hosting this festival since 1994 when its success became outstanding among Gulf and Arab art festivals and witnessed progress over the past 30 years. He said that the festival this year comes in light of the several events that Bahrain is hosting and in line with Manama being the capital of Arab Media 2024 based on the belief in the role of media and art in promoting the values of loyalty and national belonging, preserving the Gulf and Arab identity and enhancing its presence. He said that the patronage by His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad al Khalifa of this year's edition adds importance and distinction, which enhances its chances of success in achieving its goals. The information minister said that a new initiative that supports arts, which reflects Bahrain's interest in media, art and creativity, will be included in this year's festival, the Al Dana Drama Award. He said that 356 artworks will feature in this year's festival with a jury consisting of 80 artists, experts and critics. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Information, Yusuf Mohammed Al Ben Khalil, attended the 101st session of the Permanent Committee for Arab Media, chaired by the Committee Chairman Abdul Rahman Ben Nasser Al Ubaidan, for the upcoming 54th Arab Information Ministers' Council meeting in Bahrain. The meeting was held in the presence of Assistant Secretary General and Head of the Media and Communications Sector at the Arab League, Ahmed Rashid. Khatabi and heads and representatives of unions, organizations and media bodies under the system of the Council of Arab Information Ministers. Alban Khalil affirmed that Bahrain under the directives of His Majesty the King and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister is keen on supporting joint Arab action and offering facilitations and capabilities that contribute to the success of all Arab forums and meetings. He conveyed to the attendees the greetings of the Information Minister, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah al Nuaimi, and his wishes for a successful meeting. He also expressed his thanks to the Arab League Secretariat General for holding this meeting and to the Technical Secretariat Management of the Arab Information Minister's Council for its efforts in following up on the committee's decisions. The meeting's agenda included strengthening joint Arab media work and developing cooperation between Arab countries in media and a number of recommendations have been adopted in preparation for presenting them at the meeting of Arab Information Minister's Council.
The Kingdom of Bahrain has secured second position in the Arab world, third in MENA on the Global Youth Development Index 2023, with a YDI cementing itself as an established resource for researchers, policymakers and civil society to effectively track progress on the sustainable development goals associated with youth development. Bahrain's significant achievements underscores its vested commitment to nurturing and empowering its youth and talent. The Commonwealth Secretariat and the Institute for Economics and Peace recently published the 2023 Global YDI report, which identified encouraging progress and outlined critical priorities for enhancing the well-being and empowerment of youth worldwide. The index, which assesses youth development in 183 countries across several pillars, including health, education, employment opportunities, and equality and inclusion, classified Bahrain as a very high youth development development country. Marking the highest out of four classifications, this achievement reflects the ongoing investments in its future leaders. The index analyzed the performance of countries across key fields. Bahrain ranked first in MENA in equality and inclusion and first within the Gulf in terms of employment and opportunities for both pillars. Bahrain ranked 11th globally, signaling the nation's robust framework for gender parity and youth development that has been cultivated over the years now. This milestone reinforces the influence of Bahrain's long-term vision for the sustainable development of its youth, which has prioritized government-backed investments in the reskilling of its talent pool to create a future-ready workforce and fostering a culture that promotes gender parity, thereby contributing to the nation's socio-economic prosperity.